Hey YouTube, welcome to another video and in this one we'll be going over using geometry nodes to create a flower or plant uh, and I've created a special project file just for this video which contains all the assets, materials and lighting setup needed to follow along with this tutorial so we won't be spending any time on that so uh, feel free to download it, it's completely free and the link will be in the description. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like, subscribe and comment. Uh, it always helps uh, me grow the channel, so uh, please do that. Uh, I've noticed that over 85% uh, of you guys watching this video are not subscribed. Uh, and if everybody watching this video would subscribe, uh, that would help uh, grow the channel massively and uh, it would be much appreciated. So uh, please do, uh, if you can, click that subscribe button. Um, also, I want to point out that the project files containing all the geometry node stuff are available on Gumroad for just $2. And if you do decide to make this uh, project yourself, then please share with me on Instagram. It's always super fun to see what you guys make with it. Let's get started. All right, so I've opened up the free project file for this tutorial, which you can download for free from the link in the description. It contains everything that you need. So it has set up assets, it has set up lighting, camera and uh, sky texture and even the focal point and everything is already set so we can completely focus on what this tutorial is all about and that's the geometry node stuff. So as you can tell all materials are added as well making it super beginner friendly. Um, I can of course make a tutorial on how to create these uh, assets as well so feel free to ask for that in the comments down below. However this video specifically will be focusing on geometry nodes. Now to get started with our geometry nodes let's select the flower base mesh here and hop on over to the geometry nodes tab. Alright so we want to start working on the flower first so we can add it on the stalk later. So select the flower base mesh like I said before and let's hit new here. This will create a new geometry node space and if we change the spreadsheet here to mesh you can see we have some point data which is the data uh, for all the vertices of the base mesh here. And we can use that to uh, manipulate things and get it to look like a flower. So let's create some room to work with down below here. Move the nodes to the sides. And now what we want to do is we want to spawn in the um, top part first. So first of all, let's add in a point distribute. Now, if we crank up density, you will see points starting to appear and we want to decrease the density until we have only one point in here. All right, so with the one point set up, I'm now going to add in a point instance node. So shift A and look it up. And let's instance the um, flower heart here. Okay, so this will add in the uh, mesh and it's going to be pretty big and weirdly rotated. So to fix that, let's add in a transform node and move all three of these up and out of the way. And now finally, let's add in a joint geometry node here. And let's make sure we add in the original mesh. So take the group input there and put it into the joint geometry, which will combine both the flower heart and the flower base mesh. Now using the um, skill function on the geometry transform there, we can decrease it to a 0.2. So click and drag and type in 0.2. Now I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees along the Y and shift, drag, hold up to move it up along the Z axis. I'm going to move it up slightly above the base. Now I'm also going to rotate the other values to get a slightly better fit here. So make sure to tweak those to get a result of your liking. And finally, I'm going to change the position. So I'm going to go into wireframe here so I can actually see the flower base here. I'm just going to tweak both of these so it lines up nicely. Yep, and that's looking fine for now. Now let's add in the leaves. First of all, let's start off by using a point instance. Plug it into the joint geometry node and make sure you go to use collection, uncheck whole collection and choose the leaves collection. The collection is already in your outliner so you can just select it here. Very easy. And now we want to start spawning in these leaves. So to do that, we are going to add in the point distribute again, plug it into the point instance and take the group input and plug it into the geometry here. And now if we increase the density to 23, we get a bunch of leaves. And although this looks kind of cool, uh, it definitely does not look like the type of flower that we want in this case. So let's start tweaking on uh, that. And to do that, we are going to take the position data we already have and make sure the leaves only spawn at the top part here. 
So to do that, we are going to add in a attribute of vector math. And let's move these three out of the way, create some space here. And let's change this um, attribute B here to a vector. And this will allow us to use the position data that I just showed you in the spreadsheet and take it um, and use it. So let's use the position attribute, which is all the position data from the spreadsheet. Let's multiply it by a factor of 1.9 on the Z axis. Let's write that to the uh, new attribute and which I'm going to call Z pos for Z position. So effectively we've taken all the Z position um, vertice data and we have used that to uh, create a new attribute. And now we can use this attribute in the density for the point distribute to make sure um, the leaves spawn higher. Now, if we add any attribute color ramp in between those and take the Z position and write it to Z position, we can actually tweak the amount here by sliding in the black and white value. And now if we crank these into each other, we will get some leaves and I'm going for six in my case. And they will all be at the top of the flower base, which is what we want, of course. So this is starting to look like a decent flower. Um, however, the leaves kind of overlap in a strange way and they need some more random rotation. So we can uh, easily fix that by adding in a, uh, another attribute node, in this case, a attribute randomized node. Now let's duplicate it with shift D. And for the first attribute, let's take the scale value. And this will change uh, the leaves to make some of them very, very tiny. And that's definitely uh, not looking too good. So let's change it from float to vector here. And now let's tweak the values here. So I'm going to go for all the minus values and I'm going to change this one to 0.75, this one to one and this one to one as well. Now for the max values, I'm going to go for a 0.5, one and a 1.25. This should give us some random values for the leaves, making some thicker and some smaller. And it looks uh, a bit more organic, so that's, uh, that's nice. All right, so that's one. Now let's change the second attribute and randomize to vector as well. And in this case, we wanna work on the rotation. Now let's go and change both the max values for X and Y to zero and the Z value to like a value of five and set it to uh, add instead of replace create. Now we can just uh, click on the seed setting here until we get a result that's uh, looking like a decent flower. And for me, the uh, first seed is a uh, pretty good one. So I'm gonna stick with that. All right, so uh, if yours is not looking too good, make sure to tweak the seed until you get one that's uh, looking fine. Uh, as I said, one is fine for me. And this effectively finishes up all the geometry node stuff for the flower base. And now I want to add some stuff on the flower heart here, the, the core of the flower, making it look a slightly more uh, realistic. So I'm going to select the flower heart here and add in a new geometry node system in here as well. And I'm going to add in a joint geometry node again. All right, so let's move these to the side a bit, create some space again. And next up, I want to add in a point instance, plug it into the joint geometry node here. And a point distribute and plug that in there and in there. So now we have this simple base setup again. Now let's increase the density to 15 and create some space here again. And in between the point distribute and the point instance, I'm gonna add in a attribute randomize again. And now I wanna instance the um, hairs object for the point instance there, which will add in a bunch of, uh, of the curves that I created for you. And now, of course, we want to change the skill here. So let's type in skill for the attribute. And let's make sure to set it to a 0.4 max value. And for the minimum value, I'm going to go for a 0.1. Yeah, that's looking fine. All right, so now we got some hairs on the flower heart here, um, which is where the bees go to, I think. I don't, I'm not sure, though, but uh, I do feel they go somewhere in there to get some pollen and stuff. And if we go into uh, material preview, you can see we got the nice purple leaves there, the green stalk and the flower heart with the hairs on it. So that finishes up our entire flower model and all the geometry note we need to do for that. We can now start uh, working on the uh, actual plant. So let's go into the camera view with NumPad 0 and select our stalk here. 
Let's create another geometry node system for this object. And let's start working on our flower uh, total object. So first of all, join geometry node, put it at the end there. And now we want to combine several things. Of course, we want to uh, add in the flowers. So um, to do that, let's start off again with the point instance, plug that in there. And for the object, we are going to select the flower base, which now also contains all the data from the leaves and the heart. And next up, as always, is the distribute node. So point distribute, plug those into each other. And now if we crank up the density, we get a bunch of flowers. I guess if you want to make like a flower bush or something, this sort of looks good. However, it's definitely not the plan that we are going for. So uh, let's start working on that some more. Um, so the next node up is the um, attribute fill node. And we will delete this later on. It's just to decrease the skill really quick so we can actually see what we're working with. So type in the attribute skill there and go to a value of 0.2. So now we actually see what we are doing, which is uh, kind of handy. Okay, so we now want to create the taper from the flowers going from big to small. And to do that, we are going to add in another factor math node, attribute factor math, that is. And we are going to change this um, B type to vector again and change the math type to multiply. And we are going to do basically the same with that we did with the leaves. So we are going to take the position data of the uh, vertices multiply it along the z-axis and write that to the z-position again, which is a new attribute that we just create for this uh, purpose. And for the density on the point distribute, we're going to use the z-position again as well. Now I'm going to change this to poisson disc or poison disc. I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce this. And I'm going to crank up the density here to a very high number, 600 in this case and change the distance minimum to a 0.03. Now we want to make sure that we get some more leaves at the bottom and uh, fewer leaves at the top. And also we want to make sure that the leaves at the bottom or the flowers actually, I should say, are bigger and the ones at the top are smaller. So to do that, we are going to add in another attribute color ramp. And we are going to take the Z position attribute and write it to the Z position again, just like before. And we're going to taking the white value all the way down. So now we get a uh, part where there are no flowers at all. And then there are a bunch of flowers going all the way up. And next, like I said, we are going to take the attribute fill, which was just for the viewing purpose. And we're going to delete that. So control X and let's plug in a attribute vector math instead. And let's change it to multiply, change the B to a vector again. And let's multiply along the Z axis there, a value of 0.1. And now we want to take the position again. And in this case, we want to write it to a new attribute, which is called Z skill. And now if we add in another attribute color ramp, we can tweak these. So attribute Z skill. Yep. And for the result, we want to output it to the actual skill. So now you can see something is going on. We get some bigger leaves or flowers, I should say again, up top and these smaller ones at the bottom. So it's sort of starting to look good. And if we pull this white value in, you get uh, to see that the effect becomes way more dramatic. Um, and it's starting to look pretty nice. Uh, however, it's still reversed. So uh, easy fix there. We can just change these two like so. And now if we actually change the color value here, so I'm going to take the black one and go somewhere to a dark grayish tint. And for the white value, I'm going to go to a mid grayish tint, maybe slightly darker than mid gray. And now you should see something is uh, coming along nicely and everything is starting to look like the end result. Now for this, I'm going to increase the darkness a bit more. And now we get the result that we saw in the original render, which is the bigger uh, flowers at the bottom and the smaller ones at the top. So starting to look nicely. Uh, however, it does still need some randomness in there to actually make it look organic and uh, slightly realer. And we can do that by adding in another attribute, randomize. Plug it into uh, the color ramp and before the point instance, of course. 
Let's change the flow type here to vector and let's set it to add as well. The attribute of course will be the rotation and you should see a difference immediately. And now for the values, I'm gonna use a minus 0.5 on all the minimum values and on the max values, I'm gonna go for a 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then a bigger number. And I believe I used something like a 14 in my final render, but you need a number at least bigger than one for it to actually work. So do make sure you go somewhere above one uh, until you get something that you like. All right, looking good. Now I'm gonna just pull this value in a bit more so I get the uh, skill effect a little more dramatic there. I think it looks better. And I think that's all we need to do when we actually have the, uh, the plan fully set up. And now if we want to just create another one, it's super easy. I'm just going to zoom out the camera real quick. So select it, hit G, Y, pull back a bit. And if we go into rendered view, we now get this really nice looking flower, which is super simple to set up. I think we can all agree on that. And it really showcases the strength of uh, geometry nodes. So I'm just going to select the stock here, duplicate it. It will automatically duplicate all the geometry node uh, stuff. So you get the complete flower, uh, just like the one we already created. I'm just gonna rotate it, scale it up, move it to the back a bit. So we get the, uh, the render that you uh, saw in the beginning, pull it to the side. And now we get two of these very cool looking flowers. I already added some uh, depth of field in here. And that brings us to the end result. And like I said, it's uh, super simple, super easy, very beginner friendly, um, but it really highlights the effectiveness of uh, geometry nodes. So uh, that's it. And we can actually hit render. All right, so that's the end result for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we created this very cool looking flower. At least I think it's very cool looking. Um, it looks very nice and it really shows the strength of geometry nodes. So uh, I think it's a, a very successful way of using this new feature in Blender. Um, I hope you learned something and if you did, then please leave a like, subscribe and comment down below. Uh, it's always great to hear from you guys. If you decide to make this yourself, then please share with me on Instagram and uh, I hope to see you in the next one.